Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode, we probably need to gather some funds, especially so that I can unlock flight plan- well, I can unlock flight planning in Mission Control, it's only 30,000. But let me take a look at my contracts that are available to see what I can do to soften the blow to my budget. Uh, successful re-entry would really help. Uh, it'll give us four years to do that. Now, we can take a look at our contracts here. Lunar flyby we have to do in 1,065 days. Break the sound barrier pretty much any time in the next 10 years will be fine. So that's okay. Uh, speaking of which, uh, thanks to comments in uh, under the YouTube video, I did solve the problem with the mass growing constantly on the pods. And it was all the pods. And it gave me a lot of trouble for a while. Uh, I immediately tried to fix it. I tried attack life support procedural parts, I tried realism overhaul, tried Venn stock revamp, looked through all the configurations. Turns out it was KOS, and so thanks to the comments, there were three or four people who commented saying that it was KOS that had to be updated. I would never have guessed that, so thank you, and uh, so now uh, hopefully everything will be alright. I did try to update Venn stock revamp. But it turns out that that's not such a good idea because the new version of Venstop Revamp actually removed one of the engines that I already had used on a rocket and uh, was still floating in space and uh, it was on the Lancer, so we really wanted that engine. So we definitely don't want that removed. And uh, somebody in the forum thread also said it messed up solar panels, so I reverted back to the old ver older version of Venstop Revamp. And so it's been like that. Uh, now, I don't have tweak scale. I didn't think I had tweak scale, but it's possible. Uh, I, my mind is fuzzy. I've got a lot of installs of Kerbal Space Program. I've got a lot of installs just of Realism Overhaul. Uh, so uh, I didn't have tweak scale on my original mod list, but maybe I'd put it in and then t took it out again. All I know is at the start of this, I did not have tweak scale in the folder. So uh, whatever was causing a problem, tweak scale is no longer going to be causing any problems. It's not in here anymore. Uh, so we'll have to see. Anyway. Um, uh, which is a sad thing because tweak scale is really helpful, but I didn't have it originally. I didn't have it on my original mod list, so that's why I'm confused. People in the thread kept saying tweak scale was the problem, so I guess maybe I put it in and took it out during the last episode. Okay, but uh, Lunar Impactor might be a little bit uh, ambitious. I mean, uh, flyby is tricky enough. Uh, slamming into the moon is... That uh, takes a little bit more of a fine control after the fact. Um, so yeah, past the Karman line, crude. We well, we'll hold off on that as well. Breaking the sound barrier seems like the thing. Now we have to do it sustained for one minute. That's not something we can do, but at least we can get the the uh, these contracts done. Successful reentry is interesting. Okay, let me think about this and build something. In the, let, let's pick this up. Successful reentry seems like a thing we need to do. Okay, hopefully we have heat shields. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see what I can do in the VAB. Okay, well this is interesting. We do have a very small non-RP0 heat shield. That's not great. I mean, I would like an RP0 heat shield, please. Um, so let me take a look at the tech tree to see when we get those heat shields. I've already spent on the flight planning, so I've unlocked mission control. Alright, so yeah, stability and early probes, no heat shields there. Survivability is where we have heat shields. These must be the ones. Well, we have enough science. Uh, let's, uh, we might be ready. Yeah, we're already researching it. So let's move it up, uh, survivability, and make sure we have those heat shields. There's a lot of heat shields in there, too. I guess once you make heat shields, you can make heat shields. Um, yeah, I, I don't know which one to prioritize. We do have a lot more time for a successful re-entry, whereas stability in early probes might help us actually getting that lunar flyby done. You see, uh, stability and early probes gives us the RCS thrusters and these generic 2 kilonewton thrusters and all of that. So we've got the good launch clamps, the ones that didn't uh, cause any problems. But they don't uh, refuel anything. Hmm. Shall we try the other launch clamps again? Uh, 
No, I don't think so. Oh, we'll just try this. We'll try an off-plane transfer because uh, these do not keep up the feed into the tanks. So there will be boil off. Okay, well everything else I think worked just fine. Yeah, let's build one. Valentina's inside and the masses are not increasing, so the KOS fix seems to have worked. Uh, we don't strictly need Valentina to go. We have a probe core, the Able Avionics package. Uh, though I guess with Valentina we'll have SAS. The Able Avionics package itself does not have SAS. Oh, it does have SAS. Okay, well, it has SAS. Let's not have Valentina then, because we might need a pilot some other time. Uh, uh, shall we consider Bill or Bob more expendable? Let's have an engineer go. We'll have Bill go and uh, tell us how it is. Uh, we don't have to pick him right now, though. We can pick him later on. But, yeah, let's uh, build one of these. Okay, I really need to configure this toolbar right now. Let me do that. Gotta put it in my usual place. Uh, now I've got persistent rotation, just for for you to know. And I would like for persistent rotation to be in Blizzy's toolbar. All right, so here's Bill Kerman. The craft is at 2.447 tons and holding. <laughs> I decided to do this first. The electric charge is diminishing, so let's get going. Ignition. SAS is a thing. And looks good. Launch. Okay, this is not gonna work. Oh, shoot. Ah. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay, I I'm just gonna revert that. I'm just gonna revert that. I can't kill any more Kerbals. It uh, I'm not bringing Jeb back, but what the heck was that all about? It got caught on something or another. Great. Okay, let's let's do the things again. Successful reentry. Pick it up and build some stuff. And this time we will change the launch clamps on the dart. Uh, I don't know about the FASA launch clamps. Maybe maybe the other stock launch clamps will be fine. I think these that I'm using right now are from stock extensions. Clearly, they do not work fine for this purpose. Well, that sort of makes me feel better. I feel like those will release properly. Incidentally, I don't know if it works or not, but I do have this respawn option in ship manifest. We'll hold off on that until we're sure that the situation is safe for Jeb. Okay, let's hope no launch clamp shenanigans happen this time. Throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. Okay, looks good. And launch. Okay, it's going up-ish. It's a good sign. We just need to pass the speed of sound. Uh, somebody asked why I didn't use the jet engine. Well, it's because I wanted to make a pod like this. I mean, it's uh, a jet engine would require intakes and all that. Uh, no, I wanted a rocket pod. Also, um, a similar design might be usable as an escape pod or an escape, uh, you know, uh, launch escape system. We need we wouldn't have as much delta V, but. It could be usable for a number of things, actually, when you think about it. You could easily see putting this uh, without the fins on top of a rocket. Okay, we should have passed the speed of sound. I don't know how... Well, crude altitude record. Crude altitude record. Speed record, okay. Um, I sort of don't want him going too fast now. Yeah, I think this time we will uh, we'll test it as is, instead of having him go too fast. I'm worried about the pod flipping around, of course, because of the fins. Well, it's gonna flip around anyway. But we'll make sure to release the shoots before it gets too bad. 
Yeah, that one's armed. This one's armed. Okay. Those two are armed. Now hopefully we won't be going too fast for him. I heard a sound. Uh, they seem to be doing their... Oh, there they are. I was going like, where the heck are they? They're tiny. They're having a heck of an effect, though. That's a lot of an effect for such tiny parachutes. Okay, full parachute deployment. Oh, no, that's the deployment of the drogue chutes, not full parachute deployment. Still waiting on the main chutes, thankfully, because otherwise 55 meters per second would be pretty harsh. Okay, that's full parachute deployment. And that brings us to... That's pretty fast, 7.7 .7 meters per second. I didn't expect that. Now, our fins do not move. These are just uh, wing pieces. So, we're, we're sort of tilted in one direction in a bad way for some reason. Not sure why... Oh! One of the parachutes isn't fully fully deployed. Hmm, bad symmetry. Now it's deployed, and now we're at a safer speed. wonder why it's reading blue, though. Oh, it's a different size. That's annoying. Yeah, misconfigured parachutes. We're tilted slightly because of the unbalanced parachutes. Okay, recover before it tilts over or anything. Uh, we could have had Bill do some science, but I was so panicked that uh, I think we'll just leave it be. We'll have we'll have further further experiments with that. Okay, uh, all funds returned. Bill got XP. Okay, I've fixed the problems and also action grouped arming the parachutes. But it occurs to me that there was one other reason why I didn't use the jet engine. And that is because I don't have a jet engine. There is no jet engine here. Uh, a reminder, folks, uh, the X-1, the plane that actually broke the sound barrier, uh, used a rocket engine. This one in particular, the XLR-11, powered the X-1. So, yeah, it wasn't the jet engine that broke the sound barrier initially. It was a rocket. It was just horizontal and probably more expensive with the wing and all. This is cheaper, I think. And so, yep. That is uh, food for thought, but for, uh, for one reason or another, I don't have a jet engine. I have to note that I uh, did not install the T-Araby mod, and that is because I had no interest in the V2 rocket. So, given that I was not interested in building a V2, I didn't see any particular need for it. Uh, as far as the X1, I could build one anyway, so it should be alright. I don't have the normal X1 cockpit, but I, I can build a reasonable facsimile with this anyway. So, yep, okay, so that's all that settled, and I am going to build one more of these. We'll have Valentina do her thing, and it should be interesting. But first, first we'll do the Lancer. We'll try out the Lancer first. Uh... Okay, well, so I'm back in the program. I tried to uh, quit out ASAP. Um... It says Lancer landed on the launch pad. I don't think that's a situation where we can fly it. Uh, something may just sort of disintegrate. I don't know what happened. There was some glitch for sure. Um, well, I guess we'll just have to bite the bullet on that one and recover it. It says reconditioning the launch pad already. So that's not going to immediately fly. Looks like we got the funds back, actually. So we, we actually... I think that that's all of it actually. I don't know what happened. The launch clamps even. All the pieces are fine. Even all the fuel. But it said landed on the launch pad, so something went bad. Okay, uh, let's build another one I guess, but I suppose we'll be doing the dart again first and this time we'll try and get some science out of that. Uh, uh, what? What? This isn't a reconditioned launch pad. This is a pile of rubble. And Valentina is sitting in the middle of it. So let's let's just recover quickly. Recover. Uh, recover. Okay, we'll just recover from the space center screen. I don't know what else to do. Okay, we've got problems. 
Uh, the launch pad exploded randomly somehow is what happened. It wasn't the rocket. Uh, our other rocket survived, right? We recovered that. Oh, well, this is peculiar. It's always something, isn't it? I wonder if real space programs have trouble like this. Okay, let's recover that. We can't uh, endanger Valentina on that mess. I should have actually seen that. I mean, if you take a look... Oh, actually, I can't zoom in, but it, it looks like a mess there right now, too. Oh, it says repair. Okay. It's out of... Well, then don't let me launch something when it's out of service. <sighs> Silly thing. Okay, uh, Lancer, I guess. Um, yeah, let's, let's try the Lancer. Let's not build anything else for now. Reconditioning launch pad. Well, next time, uh, tell me that it's broken if you're going to recondition it. I don't know, maybe the Lancer will blow it up again. I'll keep the recording running. Last time I stopped the recording waiting until the rocket got to the launch pad, and that was a mistake, so I didn't record exactly what happened. Okay, it, it's standing on the launch pad. Nothing's exploding. Okay, I guess we can go. Uh, we're probably not in line with the moon, so it'll be an off-plane transfer again. But we can handle that when the time comes. Okay, ignition. And launch. Off we go. And over to Smart ASS. It is very tense in mission control right now, I can tell you. I'll have it hold at 45 degrees for separation. Separation. Ignition. Okay, we have it. Alright, good. Continuing to decrease pitch. Alright, that should do the trick. Where is the moon? And shall we target it? Well, 31.4 degrees off. So there's the LR-105. And then the next stage is the engine that the new version of N-Stock revamp tried to nix, or had some problem with. Okay, set. Ignition. Very good. Looks like we'll barely have enough for orbit. Oh no no, I keep missing this messing this up. We have a thousand meters per second extra. I wonder why I keep uh, messing up that calculation. Always dumping a thousand meters per second somehow. Okay, so we're gonna try and meet the moon over here. I suppose. That's gonna be a long trip though, lots of electric charge. I, I unlocked maneuver uh, mission planning. Don't seem to be able to place a maneuver node right now, though. But that could just be your standard kind of bug. Oh, I should tilt up more. I might just have this engine boost us high. I don't know. Just keep it burning kind of thing. Well, our other launch of this particular probe is helping us with communication now it looks like okay we're about to make orbit I'm just debating whether we should use some more of the fuel well I am I'm using some of the fuel to boost up a bit okay I'll, I'll shut it down there okay so now will it let me make a maneuver node no no it won't I'm pretty sure I had flight planning unlocked. Did I like forget to unlock the tracking station or something? Okay, well, 
We'll get as far as we can while still retaining communication, and then we will try the sec to try the next stage. Now I haven't got the antennae action group, so that's a problem. Now I do have persistent rotation, so time warping is not going to stop this from rotating unless I have SAS on, which I I'm not going to right now. I have Smart ASS. Our periapsis is actually too low, but that's fine. We're going to be heading out anyway. Uh, I'm going to wait until it's not firing. Well, I've just got... Yeah, uh, you can see it's only doing minor adjustments with the nitrous oxide. Um, I'll, I'll stop it from doing that. See if we're relatively stable. It seems like we are. Okay, so throttle up, obviously no ignitions here. But we can separate and go. We're pretty close to the descending node. It's all a matter of shutting it down at the right time. But without maneuver nodes, it's tough. It'd be a lot easier if I could plot this out. All right, here we go. We have no avionics. It's going. And it's stable. And we should have plenty because we use the RD0105 to start the burn. So, I mean, we could go into escape if we wanted to. Could be fun, actually, escape, but I don't think we have the communication for it. Now, how the heck do I extend the antenna? I don't know. Let's just focus on hitting the target first. It's going a little bit wobbly. Yeah, we're also a little bit off. We might actually go into escape. We I don't think we can hit it. Yeah, we're we're on escape. And actually oh it didn't shut down. Shoot. We're on quite a wild escape. How how far out are we going actually? Uh we're we're uh, going toward we're 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 ending up inside the orbit of Venus over there. Well we're not gonna have communication there. Uh, well, it says no connection right now. We've already lost communication? Okay, well, that, that was no good. Yeah, we can't communicate with it anymore. Maybe our other probe will help? I don't know. Where is it? It's on the other side of the planet right now. Let's time warp a bit and see if we regain communication. Oh, there's communication. Okay, now we can extend the antennae. If I can reach him. Now, somebody said, okay, maybe going into some locked. Okay, locked works. Activate. Activate. Now, how far will that get us? I don't know. But yeah, without maneuver nodes, it's going to be a little bit hard to hit the moon. I think I need to redesign this as well. But can we retain communication up to the point where we get into interstellar sp interplanetary space? That would be a nice thing. We're going really fast, so fast the moon really didn't have time to get over here. Okay, I think we yeah we have, we still have communication. We've got a delay of three seconds. Now this is interplanetary space, and I once again have trouble clicking this probe. This happens sometimes. Nope, it still doesn't want me to click the Explorer Core. How about, okay, well I can observe Biosample. And we can, no, we can transmit that 5 science. Yep. Oh, here we go, finally. Uh, uh, activate could do something useful maybe? I don't know. Analyze telemetry, I'll do Activate after I do all the science. Okay, transmit that 9 science. Record impact data. 12 signs. Just transmit all the things. Radiation data. Okay. Have we got a convincing amount of science? Yes, we have 79 science now. So we, we got a lot of science. I, I don't know. I'll just click that. Activate. I don't know if it'll do anything good. It extends these little guys. So now it's spinning around. 
in interplanetary space, and that's where we'll stay. We have one goo container left, but I have no idea where to use it. It's just gonna be hanging out here. Alright, well, at least we got a lot of science done thanks to that, but we didn't get the contract fulfilled. I think we'll need a much more refined probe than this. This could, in theory, get to the moon, but in practice, let me check on maneuver nodes. Let me let me do that. Let's go back to the space center and see. I, have I unlocked everything that I need for that? Okay. Well, uh, no. Mission control. Uh, I guess somehow during the glitch that happened or whatever destroyed the launch pad, I uh, I lost my upgrade here. Oh, oh, no, no, that's not what's happened. I forgot. We have to wait till it gets upgraded. That's what happened. I'm sure some of you already wrote comments. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. But I still don't think our current setup will work. We need something a little bit more clever. So I'll wait until we unlock stability in early probes and then build something. We still got 890 days. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to launch another dart for now. We can hold off on that. The crude stuff is later on anyway. Actually, you know what? We'll, we'll try one Lancer with the Maneuver Nodes. So I'll build one, just a Lancer, and then we'll try using Maneuver Nodes. And then I will try something different. I think we should give the Lancer one more try. Alright, so we have a Lancer 2 building, and the difference between Lancer 2 and Lancer 1 is mainly that I put the antennae on the outside of the probe instead of inside the fairing, so we can extend them while the fairing is still on. Yeah, otherwise we can't detach the fairings of the inner stage and try and extend them, not not legitimately. And if you try and detach all the fairings, it actually separates the stage, they're structural. So uh, one thing we have uh, that I need to fix is that we've got a really long build time here. We don't have any upgrade points here. I could buy some, but our budget is a little bit constrained. But we do have a lot of science, so we can get uh, upgrade points by selecting more science to unlock. Uh, mature orbital rocketry is pretty expensive. I mean, we get one upgrade point for each thing we unlock. So we might as well go... Here are the jets, by the way. I guess we'll unlock that. See, upgrade point added. So uh, we'll try and maximize our the number of upgrade points. Now, this is being unlocked already. Um, this, one, this one's 20 science. Basic solids. I really, really don't need those. Um... Maybe uh, high-speed flight would be more interesting for everyone. But uh, just a little bit more expensive a thing will get Mercury re-entry and the Mark 1 pod. So I think, uh, yeah, the, these pods will be the thing. So let's get basic capsules. Yeah, hello? Basic? Hello? Okay. Um, it's not letting me... It does this sometimes. It doesn't let me click on research. Wow, that gives us really powerful engines. We, we we don't really need them just yet, but they're there. There's the Atlas stuff. I'm already building a pseudo-Atlas. Got other heat shields here. These are lunar-rated. The heat shields we're getting in survivability are not lunar-rated. Okay, well, we're gonna be doing moon stuff. Um, sure. So let's get the lunar-rated heat shields and the basic capsules and we'll wait on stage combustion until we get more science but let me hop out I, I can't I don't seem to be able to unlock it right now okay. see it doesn't let me unlock it though I have to tell it that survivability is gonna be researched and it doesn't let me go for it yet great that's annoying okay here we go with the Lancer 2 and throw this up, SAS is on okay, ignition and launch okay, this time with maneuver nodes so I've taken a look at some of the parts that we unlocked and the problem is well, you have to pay to unlock each part and we don't have much of a budget to unlock. Uh, we've got a lot of really great parts to use. We can do a lot with what we, we've already uh, researched. The problem is that we don't have the cash to really unlock them. So that's where I'm at right now. Now 
Uh, we're at a slightly higher angle than I was anticipating here. I'm not going to try and use all of the third stage again. I think we're just going to use the third stage to try and get us into orbit and then leave it at that, even if it has spare fuel. and ignition okay all is well another thing I'm contemplating is uh, when the antennae extend here will it be the case that when the lower stage separates these things will knock into them the fairings I mean so we're probably even worse off at roof with regard to the moon than we were before. Yeah, 43.48 degrees. Not great. Maybe we can do a really quick trip and hit over here. I guess we'd have to, given where we're launching from. The reason I don't want to use all of the third stage is because I have such trouble shutting off the, the final stage in time. We better just plot it out and just use that stage for that purpose. So I'll make sure to plot it out so that I use exactly how much delta V I have in that stage, which is uh, 3,259. Alright, looking good, no problem so far. Stage set. And ignition. Okay, this engine is good. And we continue. Maybe I should just extend two. Just in case the fairings do knock them off. I don't know. You can see why it might be a problem. Let me deactivate two just in case. Well, we are correcting our relative inclination, but that's also pushing the node further and further away. We'll have to watch out for that. Looks like we've got a communication point there, so if we can push the node over to Nigeria, it could work. Or around the Grand Canaries will be fine too, I suppose. Okay, getting ready for orbit here. And again, I'm going to shut down this time, not use extra fuel, and fine. 290 by 167 is alright. Now let's plot our course. Again, we have 3,259 to use, and we need to use all of it. So I'm going to have to do some finicky thing that does that. In fact, just for... Safety's sake, we should try and crash into the moon. Then, if we're off, it'll be alright. Okay, 3,259 and we're crashing into the moon. The contract wants us to get within 5,000 kilometers. So if we're a little bit off, should be all right as long as we do the science quickly okay so that's what I'm thinking uh, four minutes till till the burn no the middle of the burn let's say and we've got um, pretty pretty high thrust weight ratio a minute and let's call it six seconds because halfway through the through the separation rockets will ignite this engine so a minute and six seconds, 66, 33 seconds ahead of time, uh, roughly, of course. So we're going to be having a lot more acceleration on the opposite side. So maybe more like 40 seconds. T minus 40 seconds will start the burn, but we'll have to orient beforehand. Okay, I am going to say node me and activate the RCS. Set. Ignition. Oh shoot. I hadn't throttled up. 
I didn't throttle up. Ah. Uh... It won't work now. I've done this before. <sighs> it was all nice and polite. Look, uh, 3,186, 3,186. Uh... Okay, well, I'll be here facilitating communication for a while. What can I do? All right, back to Space Center. Okay, here we are again. We're going to try it again. Uh, we're losing funds like this. I hope this time it'll work. Next time we'll have to do something completely different. This is the last try for Lancer, so hopefully I'll remember to throttle up. All right, SAS on. Everything is a go. Ignition. And launch. Alright, our trajectory is broadly similar to what it was last time. We'll hold that 45. Set. Ignition. Ooh, that was quite a lot of uh, pitch deviation there, but the gimbal brought it back. Okay. Well, this time, uh, it's going to be really hard to hit it right there, isn't it? Uh, we've lost some time. It's moved on. I, I don't know about that. That's a tough call right there. Okay, looking good. Uh, it didn't look like we had any trouble keeping the commutrons after separation. I didn't see them blow up or anything. So that's nice. I'll still only extend two, though. Okay. Separation. And ignition. Very good. Everything is proceeding fine. Uh, I don't want to say anything, but test flight has not hurt us so far. Meantime, before failure has been alright. I don't know, maybe we can still do it. I mean, when you take a look at the moon's orbit, it's like we'd have to go there in a day, which is pretty darn quick. But possibly if we hit over here, it'll still be fine. I'll just have to plot it out. So next time, one thing I'll want to do is try a sample capsule, not a real capsule, but a simulated mass with a heat shield on top of the Lancer rocket. And the Lancer rocket seems to be doing pretty well, I think you'll agree. Uh, it was meant to carry a capsule. I even shaped this sort of like a capsule. Okay, here we go, and shut down. 252 by 203. Alright, let me quickly plot it out, otherwise we won't have enough time. Looks like... Around here, hopefully we'll be in communication with the Canary Islands by then. Yeah, anyway, I look at it, it's going to be way ahead of us is the problem. So, let's do it from the other side. That's a long wait, though. We'll be over Australia. Okay, witness 3,259 again. And once again, that is what we have in the upper stages. Uh, it's a crash course with the moon that we are plotting here. It is quite a trip. Uh, bit dodgy nine days out then back in to hit the moon after 14 days well what can we do and we have to wait 42 minutes now so we'll be over Australia and hopefully we'll get communication there but 3259 is the plot Elec uh, electric charge has not been a problem with the Explorer cores they've been pretty good about that Okay, let's start doing things here. We have communication. 
node. Gonna throttle up now. Okay, here we go. All right, we are lit. We are pointing at the node. We'll see uh, when we hit T minus zero whether we're halfway through the burn, which would be good. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Not exact though. It was 3,259 and we were a little bit less than halfway through then. But we're just gonna let it go. What just happened? I, uh, I think uh, performance loss. Okay, uh, hmm. I don't know what kind of uh, We don't have enough delta. Now test flight decided to do something. Now, out of all times, I bet test flight figured out it would work. Right? I mean, only when test flight figures out it would work does it intervene. Ah. Right. Okay, performance loss. So what happened was we probably had a ISP, a drop in ISP, because we used all the fuel. Um, it just had a lower ISP than expected suddenly, out of nowhere. Okay, well, uh, well, let me uh, let me digest this salt, and I'll I think uh, I'll think about whether I want to do another one of these next time. Probably we'll start with something else. Probably we will. Uh, do that test flight with a pod and try to recover it. So we're interested in this successful recovery. I don't know if this could get a pod like that to orbit or whether this will be the, I mean, the Lancer launcher will be more like a Mercury thing and suborbital. We'll see, but we'll still do some science with it. We'll carry, we'll see what science we can carry. Probably something that we haven't carried before. Okay. Well, on this disappointing note, but uh, so close to success, I feel. I feel we were close to success. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.